Okay, so I thought we would uh, ease back into things this week. Um, for the first, well, two-thirds of the semester, we've been looking at dynamical systems um, and different ways to analyze their behavior. So we looked at uh, the concept of modeling, we looked at differential equations and transfer functions that describe the dynamics uh, of those dynamic systems. Um, we've analyzed first and second order systems uh, specifically in, in a great deal of detail. Uh, and we even looked at the stability of systems uh, based on the poles of the transfer functions. Um, so those are some of the main topics that we've discussed so far. Uh, one of the sort of quintessential applications of a lot of this uh, dynamic system analysis uh, concepts is um, in automotive suspension design. This is a very common example that's that's used to illustrate a lot of these ideas. <clears throat> so I thought we would kind of ease back into things this week by looking at a relatively practical example of the, the concepts that we've been looking at. Uh, what you see here is basically a vehicle. Uh, and one way that automotive suspension designers go about analyzing their design and, and doing some preliminary calculations is to look at something called the quarter car model, uh, which is essentially uh, you know, kind of what you think it is. Basically, for any four-wheeled vehicle, like a, a passenger vehicle, you would just take uh, one-fourth of it, and you look at sort of the overall anatomy of the suspension design. Uh, most modern vehicles have something similar to this schematic that I've sketched here, where sort of all this area in here, this is sort of the main body of the vehicle. And this is sort of a front view looking straight on uh, at the vehicle. You would have two control arms coming out to the sides, which attach to um, a knuckle or a hub, which the wheel and tire is mounted to. And this essentially creates sort of this four bar linkage, which allows the vehicle to uh, absorb some, you know, in irregularities in the road by allowing the tires to move independently of the vehicle. Um, to okay, so to absorb those um, irregularities in the road, um, this four bar linkage is hooked up to the the main chassis of the vehicle by using a spring damper system, um, which absorbs that that vibration in the in the road. Um, so essentially, what you have is a really what you have is a mass spring damper system which allows this tire to move up and down independently of the vehicle. But oftentimes the tire itself is modeled uh, as a spring. Okay, so the, the tire is itself a spring, uh, which is sort of connected through the suspension components um, to another mass spring damper system. Um, so this is almost like a, uh, a series, so, so two spring system uh, in series is the way that this uh, vehicle is modeled. Um, so, just like we've done in the past with any mechanical systems, we can break this down uh, into its fundamental components and actually model this uh, quarter car suspension um, model. And so we can basically create, uh, do a little bit of a force analysis like we would normally do, where you've basically, you know, you've got two masses. Um, one is called the sprung mass, and this M sub C is basically the mass of the vehicle that's suspended above the suspension component. So this is where the passengers would sit, um, and this uh, accounts for the weight of uh, most of the vehicle. And then there's something called the unsprung mass, which is stuff that is not supported by the suspension, like the wheels and tires and uh, some of the, uh, some of the uh, chassis components. Are, are part of the unsprung mass. And then connecting those two together, there's your your mass, uh, I'm sorry, there's your spring and damper combination. So you have the actual strut uh, usually is housed within the spring. So the, the, the spring damper is sort of one assembled unit. Um, and that's what connects the sprung mass to the unsprung mass. Uh, but the unsprung mass itself is connected to the ground, which is here. And it's connected to the ground through another effective spring, which is the tire itself. So the, the tire is modeled like another uh, relatively stiff spring. Okay, 
So that's th that's sort of the overall setup for this quarter car model. Now I believe, uh, sort of at this point, I think you have the tools available, uh, sort of, you know, the tools that we picked up throughout this semester to actually go ahead and model this and come up with either a pair of differential equations or even transfer functions to describe this uh, system as a whole. Um, so what I'm going to do is essentially give you sort of a mini project um, as an assignment for this week just to warm up and get back into the swing of things. Um, and what I'd like you to do, and, and the details of the assignment will be posted on Blackboard, but I'd like you to model the quarter car system and do some simulations on it using a, a numerical program like MATLAB. Okay. Um, what I want to show you is, uh, well, I want to show you one thing, which is uh, a simulation created by Dr. Uh, Allison at uh, University of Illinois. He posted some code uh, for one of his courses that's actually really good. Um, and I'm just going to use it here as a demo of, of uh, sort of the types of simulations that you could create um, if you wanted to. Okay, so uh, the idea here is, you know, he modeled this quarter car system. Um, and what he's done is he's basically allowed you to specify different combinations of the spring uh, and the damping coefficient. So, so this example I believe he most likely used in class to illustrate this idea of suspension tuning for this course. Uh, and what you can do is you can set the switch. Okay, so I'll post this code so you can play around with it. Um, you can you can switch between these three cases. So in one case, the vehicle suspension is tuned for comfort. In other words, you want the acceleration felt by the sprung mass to be minimal. In other words, if you're if you're riding in the car and the road is bumpy, you want it to feel as smooth as possible. Um, so that that would be this case. So there's a relatively uh, light damper um, paired with a spring constant of 500. Uh, and then in case two, this is supposedly tuned for handling. So this is going to be a little bit of a stiffer ride, but um, you know we're not going to go into the details of suspension tuning here. But if you increase the damping, uh, you basically stiffen up the system such that uh, the driver feel is improved. Um, it's going to be a little bit less comfortable, but the vehicle itself will remain more stable uh, as it enters uh, corners. You know, for racing situations. And then there's a third case, which is very arbitrary. It's just not optimal by any means. So what I'll do is I'll run these simulations for you just so you can see. Um, but, you know, offline you can kind of play around with this simulation um, however you'd like. Um, we'll start with the, the comfort tuned case. Um, and, and he's done the model here in a state space form which we don't really cover here, but you don't need that because we have the tools to model this system in a, in a more traditional way. Okay, so if I switch uh, the case to C equals 1, this is a comfort-oriented uh, simulation. And when I run this, you can actually see the big box on top, that represents the sprung mass, and the little box down here is, represents the unsprung mass. Uh, and then he's actually imported some real data to represent the ground reference. So this is like you're rolling over, you know, a, a relatively smooth but kind of, you know, bumpy road. Um, and what you're seeing is an animation of the relationship between the ground, the sprung mass, and the unsprung mass. Um, and when the simulation's over, you'll be able to actually look at the data plots. And I'll highlight a couple of things once this is uh, complete. So it's pretty cool how you can see the simulation running in real time, right? So it's tuned for comfort, so you should see the wheel or the, the unsprung mass moving a lot. And ideally, you would see the sprung mass moving very little. That would represent a very comfortable ride. Okay, so the simulation's over, and what you see is basically this plot uh, of a lot of data. Um, you can look at it more in detail on your own, but the thing that I want to point you to is this green plot which is the sprung mass acceleration. Okay, so if you want a very comfortable ride, uh, you, as part of the sprung mass, you want to experience as little ex acceleration vertically as possible. 
So the green plot here is relatively small. You can see very little amplitude in the green plot here. So I'll leave this uh, plot open. And what I'll do is I'll change the case to uh, the case that's tuned for handling. So what, what we've done here is we've basically swapped in a very light damper for a much heavier damper, uh, which is effectively going to stiffen up the system a lot, right? You're going to get a much more dam uh, heavier damper, which is going to stiffen that, that uh, system up a little bit. Okay, so we'll run this simulation now with a tuned for handling scenario. And what you can observe is the relative displacement between the sprung mass and the unsprung mass is is very little, right? It's almost like these two are moving sort of uh, in unison with each other. Um, the exact reason for why this is better for handling, well, we're not, you know, this isn't really a suspension design course, but what you can see is basically the output of the simulation. Okay, so that simulation is over. Notice now the data from the uh, tuned for handling case. I put the two plots on the same set of axes so that you can see the difference. Um, but what you, what you notice is that the tuned for handling case uh, has a much higher acceleration of the sprung mass. Right? And that's due to that much uh, heavier damper, sort of that overall stiffened uh, suspension setup. Okay, so what you can see here is like a you know much more acceleration experienced by the driver and the passenger, as opposed to the tuned for uh, comfort case. Okay, so this is a one very powerful sort of analysis tool uh, that you can use to do essentially suspension design for uh, for vehicles. Okay, so there's a third case here, which is just some arbitrary numbers. Um, you can switch this to case three. And you can actually play around with these numbers yourself and see sort of what the difference is in the output as you swap in different springs and dampers. Uh, and then down here, you can even change the mass. You know, the, you can change the sprung mass, you can change the unsprung mass, and the tire stiffness and so forth. Um, if you want, you can even look, you know, all the, the code is here. Uh, this is basically creating uh, state space matrices, which is a different way to look at uh, dynamic systems. We don't cover that in this class, but that's the approach that's used here. Uh, and then there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of code here that sort of defines the simulation. Um, and this par particular faculty is not using uh, Simulate to, to run the simulation. He's using a function called lsim, uh, which does largely the same thing, but it does so from uh, the MATLAB uh, sort of coding environment rather than Simulate. Okay, so I'll give you a chance to, to look through this uh, code. Um, if you're curious, the, the road profile was actually loaded in by this data function called IRI737B for some reason. Um, and this is just a data file, which I'll also include. It's right here in this mat file. Okay, so if you were to actually open that up, you could see the, uh, you could see the actual road uh, profile, which is, which is kind of interesting. Okay, so this is uh, more of a simulation just to show you uh, an output of one particular quarter car model. Um, this is not what I want you to do. I believe this is a, a little bit too much to ask you to do in one week. Uh, what I would like you to do is something more like this. Okay, so what I've got here is a very simple uh, simple version of, of what I had just shown you. Um, you'll still need to define all of your parameters, and you can use these numbers to start. Um, but once you define your, or once you develop your differential equations based on your model, you're going to need to create a block diagram. Okay, so we have some experience creating block diagrams uh, from differential equations. Um, I want you to do that in Simulate. Okay, so you basically build uh, a block diagram that represents your uh, two differential equations that, that comprise a quarter car model. Um, and you'll run that simulation and you'll create some plots of the data. Okay, so this is sort of the type of simulation I'd like you to run. When I run this, and of course I'm not showing you the, the, the simulate model here, 
but this is for a much more simple input. So this is the ground input here is just a step. So this is like driving, you know, this is just like driving over a curb, right? So I'm not importing any real road profile data or anything like that. Uh, I'm just I'm just simulating the case where you just drive up a curb, um, and I'm plotting a couple of things in the output. So I'm looking at again the acceleration of the uh, sprung mass. So this green plot is sort of the acceleration that the driver or passengers would feel. Um, but I'm also extracting the position of the sprung mass and the unsprung mass. So you can see the actual deflection or the displacement of both the sprung mass and the unsprung mass all plotted in the same uh, set of axes. Okay, so, um, you know, take a look at the assignment. Take a look at the, the assignment that I post. Um, there's plenty of resources online. I'm, I'm sure that you, you can find probably a better explanation of the quarter car model than I've just laid out here. Um, and you're welcome to use those resources. Um, uh, what I'd like you to do is is take what I've mentioned here, um, look at the the code that I've sent you from from this other faculty's example, um, and try to produce something that I've that I've shown you here. So just it doesn't have to be an animation; it's just going to be a static plot of the output data. Um, but try to try to do this to get back into the swing of things. So this will sort of be a very good uh, warm up or or you know sort of get, getting back into the mindset of dynamic systems. Um, and then next week, uh, we're going to jump into something sort of brand new. Uh, it's going to be, we're going to enter the frequency domain. So so notice that the time, the, the x-axis here is time. And for most of our class, all of our responses, all of our systems have been dealt with in the time domain. Um, as we move into the last uh, phase of this course, we're actually going to step into something called the frequency domain. So it's a little bit counterintuitive, and we're going to have to be sort of open to accepting this new way of thinking about dynamic systems. Uh, but we'll take it step by step. Um, and so starting next week, we'll jump into the frequency domain. Um, okay, so for this week, just, you know, uh, ease back into things, look at this assignment, try and produce a simulation of the quarter car model. Uh, and then we'll jump into the new topics next week.